Hey, everybody. It's Tim Bidermias, and this is NPR's Book of the Day. Okay, so you may not need me to tell you that dating is hard, but it is, perhaps even more so as a middle-aged person who recently ended a 36-year arranged marriage. But that's the situation at the heart of Deepa Vardarajan's debut novel, Late Bloomers. The book explores what it means to start over, and the humor, pain, and joy that often comes with it. Here, Deepa discusses the novel with NPR Sasha Pfeiffer. And while the book is fiction, the themes of arranged marriage and starting over are very personal for the author. This message comes from NPR sponsor Universal Pictures with Argyle, a twist-filled and surprising take on the spy genre about an author whose fictional spy novels unexpectedly reveal the secrets of a real-life spy organization. Starring Henry Cavill, Bryce Dallas Howard, Sam Rockwell, Brian Cranston, Catherine O'Hara, Dua Lipa, Ariana DeBose, with John Cena and Samuel L. Jackson. Directed by Matthew Vaughn and written by Jason Fuchs. Argyle, only in theaters February 2nd, rated PG-13. Is it ever too late to start over? And if it's not, how does a person do that? Those are the questions at the heart of Deepa Varadarajan's debut novel, Late Bloomers. It's the story of the Raman family, daughter Priya, son Nikesh, and parents Suresh and Lata, who've just divorced after 36 years of an arranged marriage. So Lata, she has a job uh, outside the home for the first time. She's working at a university library and she loves it. And a professor there asks her out. And uh, it's a very new and nerve wracking experience for her. Lata is nervous about starting a new relationship. Suresh is lonely and uses online dating to try to find a wife. When he does it, he starts realizing, well, people are lying in their profiles. And the funny thing is, you know, he is too, but when he does it, he doesn't think of it as lying. He thinks of it as these reasonable deviations from truth. A story about dating for the first time in middle age and unhappy adult children could be depressing, but in Vara Darajan's hands, it's human and funny. I have always been drawn as a reader to books that manage to combine these elements of humor and heartbreak. I I admire that a lot. And so I knew that when I was writing a novel, I wanted to incorporate these elements of humor. Sometimes I was less confident about my ability to pull that off, but I really knew I wanted to try. And there are these serious situations in the book, things that people are grappling with, like divorce and aging and adult sibling relationships and parental anxieties. There are also characters that are trying for a second act and trying for reinvention and trying these new things. And so there's a lot of opportunities for humor in in the things that they're doing as well. You said you thought that might be hard for you to pull off. Why did you think that? I think sometimes it, it can be hard to combine those elements of humor and heartbreak. So when you are talking about something serious like divorce or regretting these paths you didn't take in life. You don't want to make light of those things. So choosing the moments to incorporate humor and how to do it, I think that can be a challenge. And so it it took, for me, a good deal of writing and rewriting to, to try to get that balance right. Deepa, your book shows us an arranged marriage that ultimately didn't work out. But I read that your own parents had an arranged marriage and they've stayed married nearly five decades, and they seem to be happy. What's your view, as an Indian woman yourself, of whether successful arranged marriages are more a matter of luck or or work over time? Well, I think all marriages, whatever their origins, uh, require work. Uh, And as you say, I am the product of a very happy arranged marriage. My parents have been married, married for almost 50 years, and they are a very compatible couple. They have a great relationship. Um, But any relationship, whatever its origins, take work and compromise and, you know, having reasonable expectations. But with an arranged marriage, you don't have the opportunity that people who have a relationship that begins more organically to vet each other to decide if you're compatible. So I think there is a fundamental difference. That is true in the sense that it it requires more luck, I guess, in that way. You, You sort of uh, hope that you your personalities are compatible. Uh, and, you know, certainly Nikesh, their son, really thinks his parents were this accident of timing, right? That if they had been born 
at a later date, they could have had a chance to meet. They could have, like many of his relatives in India or his parents' younger relatives in India, uh, they could have had this different model where their parents are introducing them to someone, but they have this chance to hang out alone and and see if, if they're going to be a good fit. Your book shows a clash of generations and how different generations take different approaches to love and relationships. Do you think any generation has figured it out, or are we all just muddling along no matter how old we are? Yeah, I don't think any generation has it figured out. I mean, I think definitely we are <laughs> all muddling along. And the thing that I think is sort of interesting about the story is that all four of these individuals are going through this relationship turmoil at the same time. So none of them have it figured out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a line where the son is reflecting on his parents having gotten divorced and, and trying to date again. And he says, there was something admirable about what they were doing, this trying to start over thing. That made me wonder if you personally believe it's ever too late to start over. I don't. I mean, I this book is very much about reinvention and second chances. And I'm always fascinated by that question of its ever too late to have a second act. And I don't think so. I don't think it's too late to try for the things you care about. Uh, I don't think it's too late to try for a new relationship. And maybe to some extent, you know, I'm also, I think about that just even in terms of this novel. Um, I'm sort of a late bloomer when it comes to writing fiction. I'm a debut <laughs> novelist in my mid-40s, you know, so <laughs> I definitely believe in second acts. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, the title, Late Bloomer, does seem to apply to you because you had or have a law career. You you did your writing, as I understand it, while you were working at a law firm and clerking for a judge and teaching law. Do you view yourself as starting over, in a sense, by writing this? In a way, this is certainly a very new experience for me, um, this process of, of publishing a book. And, uh, you know, it's something that's very different than my academic life in, in many ways. Um, but it's a dream that I've had for a very long time to uh, be a published writer, and I'm, I'm excited that it's happening. You know, every good novel is both a story that also contains larger messages about life, things we can learn from other writers about life. How much of your book did you want to be just a good, interesting, entertaining story and, and something that tells people about relationships and options and, and love. What did, what's the balance of those two things for you? I definitely wanted this to be a story that brings people joy. I wanted it to be a hopeful story. Um, but I do hope people gain these insights about love and relationships and reinvention and second chances. Um, I think some things that people can take away from this book is that it is never too late for a second act. It's, it's never too late to try for something you care about. And sometimes our family members change and evolve in these ways that we struggle to accept. But when we do, we, we can grow together in ways that we didn't anticipate. That's author Deepa Varadarajan. Her debut novel is Late Bloomers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I'm Tim Bidermius, and that's it for today's episode. Just a reminder that you can sign up for Book of the Day Plus, which allows you to listen to Book of the Day without any sponsor breaks. And you'll be supporting our books coverage at NPR. You can find out more at plus.npr.org slash book of the day. And a big thank you to everyone who's already signed up. Hey, everybody, it's Peter Sagal, host of Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. We're trying really hard to get 401 new Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me Plus supporters in the month of February. And to make this plea a little tastier, we're going to grant you some extra fun episodes. Head to plus.npr.org and sign up for Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me Plus to hear the most mouthwatering show on public radio today. This message comes from NPR sponsor Rosetta Stone, an expert in language learning for 30 years. Right now, NPR listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership to 25 different languages for 50% off. Learn more at rosettastone.com NPR. This message comes from NPR sponsor Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell and show up exactly the way you want to. 
Customize your online store to your style. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash NPR.